Hey guys, I want to do the next video on how to do hot swapping that I promised of batteries. So in some cases you may need to reboot your uh, battery and I had one where my T500 just refused to charge it until I shut down the battery and reboot it. Well, I did that while the rest of the system was live and still servicing my house. The other use case may be, and this is from my previous video, I had a DC charging port on one of my B300s that went bad. So instead of basically shutting down the whole system, shutting off the load, sorry, the power to my loads, uh, I had a neighbor come over and we just lifted up the uh, head unit and we were able to hot swap or hot remove the bad battery and send it back for warranty. So right now I'm gonna go over with you guys, what are the requirements to uh, do hot swapping and then how do you de actually do it? So first let's take a look at the environment. So first we're gonna come up here to my dashboard and you can see that my master right now is running about 500 watts and my slave is running about 280 watts. So I expect this to fluctuate because I actually have a washing machine going on right now. So there's 1300 watts coming in, that's the washing machine. Plus you're also going to have the electronics back there and a whole bunch of other things that are running right now. So let's go confirm that that's what we see on the master. Okay, so still about 1300 watts. And let's go over to the slave here and we can see it's about 280 watts. So we know that my split phase environment right now is fully working and running and that I'm servicing my home. So if I wanted to come over and shut off that battery, let's say it's Battery number three is what I marked it as. Something's wrong with it, we want to hot swap it. You would think I come over to this power button on the battery and attempt to shut it down. Well, it's gonna tell me, no, I can't do that. And the reason why, let me zoom back in. It's basically going to say that there is input power coming in. So either solar or grid power, and you can't shut anything off or change the state of any of these batteries. So what we're gonna do is actually go eliminate the input. So we're gonna shut off solar coming in, okay? And then we're going to actually we'll go out of the screen real quick, okay? And then I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see that screen. We're going to try to shut off the battery again, okay? And we're gonna come back up here and it's gonna say, nope, can't do it. So what are the other two things that are happening right now? Well, I have my T500s that are running right now. And once again, those come down off to the side and they charge the battery on the side. So we're gonna have to go shut those off. Another reason why I have local shut off, okay? So I just shut off the breaker that runs my master. So you can hear and see that my two T500s are no longer lit up and they're no longer charging. So let's go ahead and attempt to do it again. Okay, so we're gonna go back and we're gonna attempt to shut off this power again. Okay, and it still won't let me do it. Well, the reason why is it's all power sources coming in. You guys can see, and let me zoom out, from my AC500 uh, split phase system right now, I have a rat's nest of wiring that's coming over to my AC300 environment. Well, that's because I've been taking these um, AC500s and the PS70, and I've been testing a use case where you may take another DC system and emergency charge your split phase system. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm actually taking 24 volt uh, cigarette DC output and it's actually coming over to my AC300 environment and then into the battery off the side. So there's additional power coming in. So once again, it's this battery that we want to swap out. So I'm gonna pull that power source, okay? There's that power source is out. And normally you'd be like, okay, well, maybe I can go shut it down now. You still can't because it's all power sources to this entire stack. Not my slave stack, just my master, excuse me, master stack. So down here I have another one DC port coming in. Okay, there's that one. And we're going to unplug that one too. So now I have my solar turned off, my T500s shut off. If I was charging through the head unit, make sure that's off. Make sure I have no power sources coming in off to the side either. So now we're gonna come in, zoom in. Okay, we're gonna back out of this and we can see that the screen obviously still says I'm servicing my load, so I'm still doing my washing machine. Now, if I try to come down here and I try to shut this off, it shuts off, but wait a moment, it actually didn't. We're going to have to come into the battery status here, the percentage, click on this and you see I have two batteries listed still, okay? So it says one and three. Well, if I look down here, there's three. That's the one we shut off, no power. 
and then one's down there. So I have to come back up to the screen and now you see it's gone. Once it's gone from the screen here, now you can hot swap this battery. So now I can come up here and let's see, I'm just gonna unplug it from here. I'm gonna do my best to unplug it from here, let's say that. Uh, unlock the cable. Not the easiest thing to do with one hand. Okay. And now you can see my cable is unplugged. So I'm physically disconnected. So at this point, that's been hot removed. And you can see, okay, I'm still servicing loads, 500. My washing machine, I can hear it's still running, but it's not doing the agitation mode anymore. So still about 500 watts, still producing power to all my loads off the master and then off the slave. So now it's exactly the same thing if I want to add the battery back. No power sources, no grid, no T500s, no DC charging, no solar. The system needs to be running battery power only. So now we're going to go attempt to put this back in. Hopefully I can do this with one hand. Okay. I'll try to unlock that. I'll try to attempt to get my hand in here. All right. Okay, once again, when you put a battery cable in, if this will not go forward and lock, you are not all the way in. So because I can flick it forward to lock it, I know I'm all the way in, okay? So now we're back hooked up. We're gonna go back to the screen here. We're gonna open up the battery information again. I still just have one. Well, the top battery still shut off and just the bottom one. So one is on, and that's what the screen says, one is on, okay? And then we're gonna go back here and turn on three, okay? So there's three. Now, when you turn this back on, this is gonna beep for a second and sh throw an alarm, but it'll clear that alarm in a second. Basically, it's just saying that a new device or new battery has basically been connected. So at this point, this battery is fully online. So if I go back here, now my uh, full percentage probably would have changed because now it's gonna be the average of those two batteries. So that's how you add a battery back in. And we can kind of look back up here too and we can still see I'm servicing my loads. So the master basically, oops, it doesn't help when it shuts off. The master basically um, is still servicing the loads. Now my dashboard basically doesn't know that the battery's been added back in yet. This usually will take, uh, I've noticed about 15 seconds. Well, never mind. Now it knows about it. So the battery on my dashboard finally appeared again. So that is how you do hot swapping. And let me zoom out of batteries or uh, basically hot swapping them out or hot swapping them in. Golden rule is no power in solar, T500s, grid, anything. So now that everything's back on, now I can come back over here and I can turn on everything, including my T500s, okay? So they're coming back on, they're evaluating the system and then they should probably start charging it here in a second. So there goes one. And there goes the other. So both of them are charging right now. And then I can come back in here and re-add my DC solar, I'm sorry, DC charging that I'm testing with. And I'm back up. Never affected anybody in my house, or at least I didn't hear anybody screaming or yelling that, you know, stuff started shutting off. So in my next video, I'm going to talk about this device right here, this little gray box. Uh, it's not required. It's basically a customize it uh, video I'm going to do. Uh, it's for the larger systems out there and maybe why you might want this unit. Uh, and I'll talk about that in my next video. So I hope this helped. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, if you guys get the opportunity to, to do so, please like and subscribe to my channel. I will be coming out with a lot more of these videos that teach you guys how to do basic maintenance, troubleshooting, and customize your environment. Thanks, guys.